What we get? What did we get? <laughs> you might see it already. Da da. DG RS3 Mini Gimbal. Sorry for the camera work, guys. <sighs> You're seeing this as I'm seeing it. Manual. And uh, this here. There she is. Man, every time that cat sees a box, she's in it. But, uh, so I don't have a clue now how this works. I have to look at the manual. And I don't know what else is uh, in here. Okay, so you'll get the attachment for your camera so that it's a quick connect. I was thinking about that. Um, so you'll get that. That's a handle. Some candy. And there's a charging cord. So uh, when I get all this laid out, we'll see how it works. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. We are going to do an introduction to this product right here, the DJI RS3 Mini Gimbal. I realized that it would have been nice to have a gimbal when we were in Europe going and uh, going around and a tripod is just too, uh, well, invasive. I mean, if you're busy, everything around you is busy, people are brushing up next to you, having a tripod, it just, it, you just can't find the place or time to get what you want in the shot uh, without being jarred all over the place anyway. So the monopod, same thing. And uh, the selfie stick, well, you know what that's like. Nobody gave it to us. You know, it's our own money. So it's 795, 795 grams. You thought I was going to say the price was 795. The price is about 400. You can get a little less, you and it's usually a little more. 400 is the range. So what do you get in this product? You get the charger. You don't get the adapter for the wall, uh, but any any charger that's five volts maximum you can use. I just use the USB. About two hours or so to charge. And you got a cable that will plug into your phone and connects to the gimbal. RSS they call it. That is for if your Bluetooth is not up to snuff. I'm using the ZV-E10 Sony and a Samsung S20. So the, the Bluetooth on the camera, it works beautifully. Everything works. No issues. Hey YouTube family, hit that subscribe button because not only does it keep you in the loop, it also lets the YouTube algorithm know what that you like this sort of thing. Also, it helps the uh, YouTube algorithm push this video out to more and more wonderful, beautiful people just like you. But before you buy something like this, and if you're buying this particular brand, go to their website and look up. There's a list of cameras they have there. It's quite the list. If you if yours is on there, look at what the functionality of it is. They will tell you um, what will work. A tripod, a little mini tripod that screws into the bottom, and you get a backing plate for your camera, which I wish it was a little more universal. It's their product. And uh, but it would have been nice because everybody knows you're going to be taking the camera off the gimbal, you're going to be taking it over to your tripod or uh, your big shots, probably a teleprompter. So you're going to be taking your camera off and on. So if it was a little more universal, then maybe it would fit more other products, and the, the ease of you know transitioning uh, would be much convenient. 
you get the backing plate and you get a thumb screw and another screw that you got to use a screwdriver for. And that is all you get in the box. When you first start up the gimbal, you're going to see uh, the language. So you just hit the top arrow once you choose your language and it goes and it's usually going to come up with a QR code. You can scan that QR code and that will take you to their website where you can download the hat. If you got the Samsung, Samsung sometimes are a little finicky when they're downloading uh, third party apps. So you might have to go into your settings and change some things, but I got it downloaded and I haven't had any problems with it since. That is in a nutshell the introduction to this thing. The next video, the next part of this video maybe, is going to be on the, the settings of the gimbal itself and also balancing the gimbal. As you've seen in the unboxing, you don't get much. You get the gimbal and that's all that you need, right? Uh, make sure it's charged. Before we get into the balancing of this gimbal, I just want to bring up a few things that you may not be considering. I didn't. I wish I knew when I started uh, balancing this gimbal. However you're going to use your camera, have that set up exactly on your gimbal. I'll give you a few examples. If you're going to use a cable to connect your gimbal to your camera, have that installed when you before you balance. Put the battery in your camera, make sure it's in there before you do your balancing. Um, if you use a particular focal length, what I mean is say you're doing talking in videos like this particular portion, and that's normally what you do, then if you, you usually have a 21 to 23 millimeter focal length, set your cam uh, lens to that if you have a zoom lens because the zoom lens gets longer as you zoom in, obviously, so it's going to throw off your balance. So make sure that you have that set up as well. Make sure your lens cap is off. You get the idea. Just ready to, as if you were going to hit record, that's how it needs to be. You need your gimbal as perfectly balanced as possible because it's going to save your gimbal. You're not going to wear out your gimbal as fast because the motors is not working as, as hard. When it's off balance, it's got to compensate for everything. And we're not talking a V8 engine here, right? <laughs> It's just little tiny motors, so uh, you'll save your gimbal and you'll get a lot longer out of your battery life. So now that you know that and you're ready, let's get to the balancing of this gimbal.